box fighting is a term that's starting to get used a lot when talking about competitive Fortnite. It's not a new concept by any means, but more and more players are just now starting to realize its importance. As a reminder, our box fighting course is being released soon over at ProGuides.com, so be sure to check that out for even more information and tips to improve your games. Hello everybody, I'm your host Dan, and today we're going to be analyzing some World Cup footage to see how some of the best pro players box fight. Specifically, we'll be looking at some box fights from Mongrel and Klix, both considered top box fighters in the pro scene. Using that, we'll be able to answer some questions like, how do you effectively box fight, and why does it work? Before we begin, let's start off by trying to define box fighting. Box fights are close-range engagements that involve players hiding in boxes they've built. It usually involves an aggressing party and one on the defensive end. It's a solid combination of building techniques, editing strategies, reading your opponent, and also some teamwork if you're not playing solos. Since building into a box is done by nearly every player, knowing how to defend yourself or punish others inside them is vital for success in the competitive environment. Box fighting tends to work very well due to its safe nature. Not only can you play aggressive, but unlike with build battles, you're less likely to get shot down or spotted by others. And even if you are spotted, the cover provided when you box fight is what keeps you alive. Against better players, it almost becomes necessary to get kills without exposing yourself to the other players. Many say Mongrel's one of the best Fortnite players in general, and by no coincidence, he's also considered a top-tier box fighter. His awareness of what's going on around him, as well as his building and editing mechanics, are what makes Mongrel excel at winning close-range duels. Our first clip is a pretty basic encounter. It's not during the end game, but it can still teach us a few things about box fighting. It's duos, and Mongrel and Mitro are pushing a player they think is alone at the soccer stadium. Mongrel throws down some stink bombs while Mitro lays down suppressive fire. He notices Mitro starting to push up, which gives him the opportunity to also push, since Mitro will be applying pressure. Mongrel drops down a floor and goes for the quick wall replace. He gets it and notices no ramp or cone piece inside. Thinking quickly, Mongrel places his own and uses it to close the gap on his opponent. After getting the knock, Mongrel shifts his focus and goes for the high ground. He doesn't get it and instead edits down to group up with Mitro. From there, the rest of the fight plays out typically, and they end up getting both the limbs. Okay, so that play seemed simple, right? On the surface, yeah. The decision making happened so fast with Mongrel that it definitely appeared that way, but let's take a closer inspection. First, with the cone piece. When aggressing on a player in a box, you never want them to be able to edit out and ramp over you. To prevent that, you place a cone or ramp piece instead of a floor. As for which is better to place, the cone piece has a lot more versatility than the ramp. Second, there is the decision not to build cover while going for the wall. A lot of the time, when you're trying to break into somebody's box, you make your own box next to theirs. That way, you're protected from potential third parties and trap plays. Mongrel doesn't do it here because he's going for pure speed. With the brick wall not fully built and Mitro attacking from another angle, Mongrel knows that if he's fast enough, he can take the wall before his opponent turbo builds it. And it works. Before that guy realizes what's going on, Mongrel gets access to inside the box. Then there was getting control of the cone or ramp piece inside the box. Both the cone and ramp piece can be placed or edited to provide secondary cover after your wall gets taken. If Mongrel didn't quickly go for that ramp piece, his opponent would have placed it either to block more shots or build up to high ground. So to summarize this engagement, speed and surprise can often be the deciding factor on getting a wall replace. Make sure there's always a cone or stair piece at your feet, both while aggressing on a box and when you're playing defensively inside of one. That way, your opponent can't easily place their own. Lastly, use the surprise factor. If the wall can be destroyed in two hits or you've got a teammate distracting, relying on unexpected aggression can make it so your enemies won't even be able to react. Now, how about an example of a play that doesn't work out for Mongrel? Just later on in the same game, our duo tries to box fight a team on the edge of the storm. Mongrel's making a lot of good decisions at the start. The walls he puts up preemptively get sniped at right away, showing us why it's done in the first place. He switches up his position and what piece he's hitting in order to confuse his opponent. Swapping between the floor or cone and the walls means your opponent has to be on the ball with the right piece out if they want to prevent the replacing. Throughout the floor replace attempts, he also keeps swapping to his flint knock just to defend himself in case of any edit plays by his opponents. Eventually, he replaces the pieces, but his opponents move a box over. Mongrel decides to go for some spam fire with his Tommy gun. When he applies pressure, the plan is for Mitro to push in from the other side, hopefully catching their opponents distracted. Unfortunately, Mongrel lets his guard down and gets eliminated by a guy that sort of just runs at him with a shotgun. Now, what this guy did here wasn't a bad play. Like we said before, unexpected aggression can work wonders. Mongrel wasn't prepared, and we can see his decision-making stagger. Oh my god! 
Oh my god! What? Oh my gosh. He just walked up to me like a bot. He just ran to me. He's too slow in resetting the edits and isn't able to keep his opponent out of his box. While that's one of the last plays you'd expect in Mongrel's position, what could have been done? Well, a cone piece on the floor below him would have prevented his opponent from building those ramps. That probably would have been the best move in their situation, and Mongrel could keep applying pressure without worrying of anyone pushing him. Switching up his moves could have also worked. Mongrel gave his opponent too much time to think of that attack plan while he was spraying. Had he only fired a few bullets, then closed the floor and swapped positions? Or if he even pretended to swap positions, he likely wouldn't have been pushed like that. You should always try to keep your opponents on their toes when it comes to your attack plan. That way, they won't have the time needed to think and come up with an appropriate counter to your aggression. Clicks is no doubt considered one of the top contenders for winning the World Cup. He's got low ping, which lets him take walls from turbo building players online, but that's definitely dismissive of his skills, as Clicks has shown to be more than proficient in other areas of the game. Let's take a look at how he approaches the fight. It's the mid game, and Clicks's baller gets destroyed. He feels the disrespect coming out from his opponent, so he decides to show a bit of his own. He starts on the defensive end, but topsy turvies the situation with some hard retaliation. Clicks tosses his stinks, making the opponent tunnel out. This gives Clicks the opportunity to get into a better position. Instead of going for the high ground, Clicks works his way into box fighting range. He starts throwing all of his stink bombs, but hey, it's the World Cup. Every play is fair game. Clicks could probably go for high ground here, but it's in his best interest to not commit to a build fight. Build battling just doesn't happen as much in these stacked games, as it uses a lot of material and exposes the participants to third partying. Clicks stays low or at his opponent's level, never once getting the high ground this fight. He goes for some wall replace attempts, but his opponent is fast to react, building out before it happens. They trade some shots eventually, which goes in Clicks' favor. At this point, after all the stink bombs and now shotgun shots, Clicks knows this guy is low on health. At this moment right here, Clicks sees his opportunity. The third party spam starts coming in on his opponent, and the angle is perfect. There's a situational trick you can use to get into people's boxes from underneath them, even through their turbo build. Place a ramp leading up to the floor piece. Then, while breaking through their build, you crouch right at the tip of the ramp and spam jump. If done correctly, you should phase through the floor. That's what happens when you break my ball, bud. Next time, don't do that, and maybe that won't happen. Boy, this guy must have really felt the regret here. In these World Cup games, Clicks almost never commits to a build battle. He'll start them sometimes, but makes a smart decision to slow down if his opponent goes crazy with building. In nearly every mid or late game situation, he aggresses with box fighting. There are just too many players around him for any sort of extensive build battle to occur. While World Cup games are on a whole other level, the same thing can apply for your arena games. You can lower risk in your engagements by choosing to box fight instead of treating height as the only objective. How Clicks gets his walls definitely has to do in part with his ping, but there's a bit more to it than just that. When wall replacing, Clicks swaps to his build piece as soon as the pickaxe is dealt damage. This is before the animation ends, so it takes a lot of practice to time correctly. You see this timing in play a lot. His swings won't go off because he's a tiny bit too early on swapping to build. If he can't get wall replaces easily, he'll either pull out his weapon or back off. Normally, you should expect an edit peak when your replace attempts fail. With that, you need to be careful after every failed attempt. Look through your opponent's build and see if they pull a weapon out. That can indicate an edit play is about to occur, in which you should get behind cover. As any competitive game evolves, players become better and better at finding new and more efficient ways of playing. For instance, early on in competitive Fortnite, fights were all about building for the high ground. But now, with the player base being so much better, build battles have become too risky. The only time you see players value high ground now is during the end game, where it thrives off of the chaos. 
Box fighting is seen as a much safer and effective option, and is the style of play many are trying to become a lot better at. We hope you guys all enjoy your day, and thanks for watching.